What's going on guys? I'm George and today I'm solving Reddit's wiring problems. Came across this post on the Z31 subreddit. Uh, someone is saying warning lights on digital dash. So the problem is they seem to have all of their warning lights on on their digi dash. Let's read the description. When this started, the lights would appear when accelerating and would fade out after taking my foot off of the accelerator. The lights would also appear when hitting the brakes. At first, I thought it was maybe an alternator issue due to the battery reading on the dash. Checked both the battery and then the alternator itself and both are operating normally. Also checked fuses and all are good. Then went online and looked around, took out power supply box and checked the circuit board for anything on the soldering that would indicate an issue. Okay, so he's done a significant amount of troubleshooting here. No issue there. My next step will be to take off the digital dash cluster and check connections and use my multimeter to check continuity through the wires. If anyone has any advice or suggestions, they would be very greatly appreciated. Now we can see in this digital dash, there are five lights on. Brake light, the door light, this is a radiator, so low coolant. You have the lights on and then you have low washer fluid. All right. Let's see what we can find in the factory service manual. So this is a 1986 Nissan 300ZX and I have the EL section of the factory service manual open. Warning lamps and chime is what we're gonna wanna look at and that's page EL95. Warning lamps and chime. All right, so this is detailed but not quite enough, which is why we wanna go to page EL96. And this is where we have a proper circuit diagram. So let me zoom in and let's take a look first at the bulbs. On the right of the diagram here, we see all of the warning lights and you can see everything that was mentioned. So the radiator, so coolant level, um, headlamp, stop and tail light, that's the lights. You have wash, washer fluid, door and brake. Now you also have a belt and sensor here. Uh, but those weren't on on the digital dash. That's that's important to remember. The question I'm asking myself is what would make all of these lights act together? And the first thing that I see is pin 40, which connects to all of those bulbs. So I traced pin 40. If you look at it, it's right here. Um, and this wire is green, hence the green tracing. We can follow this wire all the way back to the fuse block going to a 10 amp fuse and then ignition switch on or start, which means that this wire has power anytime the ignition is on or you're starting the engine. That being said, I don't believe that power is the source of the problem here because all of the lights are turning on, which indicates to me that it might be a ground side issue. Looking back over here, we know that pin 40 is this green wire, right? Which is the power. So we also now can infer that all of these lights are on ground controlled circuits. So their respective switches or sensors will ground out the other side of the circuit and that is what causes the lights to come on. On the ground side, there's also something important to note, which is how all of these wires split off with diodes and connect up to pin 45. So that's the next place I'd like to look. Pin 45 right here is a L slash W, L being Nissan factory service manual speak for blue, um, slash W meaning with a white stripe, which I did not annotate here, but let's trust that there is a white stripe. Let's trace this wire now. We can follow it all the way back to this relay. Now it is on the switched side of the relay, meaning it's one of the wires that is controlled by the relay. Um, and that is called the bulb check relay. Now, the first thing I would do if I was troubleshooting this issue is I would simply remove that relay to see if that is the source of any issue. Now, bulb check relay doesn't give us very much information, but we do have this 34E, which is the, um, the number that would correspond to where this is in the factory service manual. To find that, I'm gonna go back to the first page of the EL section and scroll down to harness layout, which is EL193. Here we are, and I'll spare us some time of having to sift through all this. I did already annotate this. Here we are, 
34E bulb check relay. And where that is, found it on the diagram, 34E, right here in your relay box. So in the engine bay, it looks like based on the shape of this, that it would be this relay right here. So closest to the engine, second from the back. If you pull that relay out and the issue stops happening, you know that the issue is either the relay or the circuitry that controls that relay. Now let's go back to the circuit diagram and see what it is that's controlling that relay. Here we are. Now on the control side of the relay, there are two wires. We have BR slash W, so brown with a white stripe, and B slash W, black with a white stripe. Let's start by tracing black with a white stripe. Here it goes back to our fuse block. And if we see when this 20 amp uh, fuse has power, it's again on ignition switch on or start. Um, what this means is that that relay is effectively gonna always be powered on in the scenarios that are causing this problem, right? When the engine's running, when the engine's running through its, its rev ranges, when the brake lights are being pressed, when it's being driven. So let's look at the other side of the control circuit of that relay. And that is the brown with a white stripe. Tracing it down here, we see that there's a slightly different connector for automatic transmissions or manual transmissions, but they do meet up on the other side, and that goes to the two pin connector on the alternator. Um, so it could be that the alternator is grounding out this wire. Remember the other um, side of the control circuit of the relay was the power side, so this has to be the ground side. It could be the alternator is causing that to ground out, uh, which is why you would have that relay be activated and all of your warning lights turn on. It could also be that you have simply a bad relay, right? You, the car's in 1986, that relay's been ticking on and off for longer than my heart's been beating. It could be that it's just a bad relay that needs to be replaced. Either way, start by pulling out this relay, seeing if there might be an issue there. If not, take a look at your alternator. I know it's already been tested, but it could be that there's still an issue on that side of things. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like what it is that I'm trying to do by answering people's wiring problems on Reddit, don't forget to like the video. Feel free to write in the comments down below if you have a problem wiring your car or hit me up on Reddit. My name's the same as it is on YouTube. Thanks again for watching.